All right, the point of this video is to just simply say, have a plan, let your plan work for you, and make sure it makes sense on your homestead. One of our main goals uh, on the homestead was to always be sustainable. Um, one of those sustaining practices would be providing milk and meat. Well, the cow is a perfect fit for our homestead. It may not be for yours, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I hope everybody's having a good day. It is hot. You can see I'm like sweating profusely. Uh, it's about 92 here in South Mississippi, so that is very, very hot already. And our garden was loving the rain, but now I don't know if it's loving the heat, so we're going to get the shade. Uh, what we're doing now is walking our line of temporary fencing. Any grass or trees touch it, we're cutting it off there because ultimately that's going to take the charge away. Um, the last thing I want to do is chase a cow. That's why we get rid of sizzle. If you hadn't seen that video, see it because he is gone. So I don't want to chase these. I don't think that'd have to anyway. But the main thing is always check your line, make sure nothing's touching it, make sure there's no weeds on the bottom touching it. But also make sure there's no tree kind of overhanging on it because it can really cause a popping. And what that popping is saying is, hey, it's pulling that charge away from where you want it to. Uh, I don't think our cows would break through this, but I'm not going to give them much of a choice. So, point of this video. Point of this video. Have a plan. Number one, cows. Why does the Max Happy Homestead have these cows? What makes it special to have a jersey that I'm milking, a low-line jersey that I've got to breed, a little Angus that I have here, a miniature rich bull that I have here, sizzle when well, he's gone, so we won't kill him. Why don't I have these four cows? Well, easy. There's a plan. Uh, Elsa's plan is she is a milk cow. Our goal is to milk her. She is basically... Um, a milk or cow. She, she is not a miniature. She's a full size. So she is about, oh goodness, probably 800 pounds. A beautiful milk cow. She does great. She was used to being milked. So she fit us perfectly. Now let's talk about these three because this is the ones I want to focus on today. What's the point in having a Jersey bull for three or four head of cows or however many you have when you can just AI? Because AI is way cheaper. Well, for us, we're looking for sustainability. Um, without a bull, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, you can always, you can always buy uh, kits for AI and, and there's always a vet to AI. But if we're talking about prepping or sustainability, uh, you can't have a baby maker without a baby maker. Hence daddy -o. His goal is to make babies. Now, he, a bull will eat you out of house and hole. So if you're struggling with land or you don't want to pay for a lot for feed, you don't need him. However, if you have a good intentional uh, rotational grazing plan that makes sense, uh, it can work. And it does here. Now, let's walk up to him. He's pretty gentle. He's eating. He might get mad at me. Let's see. All right, can you see? He's a short bull. He's a miniature registered jersey. Why would I go with a miniature registered jersey? Why do you think? No, no it, has to, it doesn't have to be registered, but why would I go with a mini jersey? Because a few things. Miniature cows and miniature bulls will not eat nearly as much as a full-size cow or bull. So he is probably full-size 800, 900 pounds. Uh, that same bull that's not miniature may be 12 to 15 to 18 to 2,000 pounds. That's a lot of difference in poundage to eating food. So he makes sense for our farm. Secondly, why do we buy a dairy bull? Nobody buys a dairy bull. They they am. Well, we have two Jersey cows that ultimately are going to throw off small miniature Jersey, hopefully heifers, to then turn around and sell to other homesteaders who says, I, I don't like goats because I don't like goats. But the big cows, I really don't know if I have the land for. And so miniature Jersey just fits the bill. Uh, a typical miniature Jersey or low line Jersey like Allie. I mean, Allie's pretty much full size out there. I mean, she's, she's probably six... 600 pounds and that's about as big as she'll get other than when she's pregnant she's small now compare her to elsa elsa's way bigger than her 
but but she is going to fit this 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 plan perfectly because ultimately she's not going to eat as much she may not even have to produce as much milk which is a good thing because sometimes if you get too much milk what are you going to do with it <clears throat> and then also what she throws off is going to be small enough to where it's not going to cause her issues if i have to pull that cow so what's the point of the angus well she was a a companion heifer basically to the first heifer i got which was Allie. now i will eventually put her at the the bigger area where the other apiary is where we're putting some bigger meat cows ultimately just for for food um but right now because she will be a first time heifer she's actually coming in heat so i know she is getting ready to be bred uh, i'm going to breed her with my jersey bull and most people are like why would you breed this beautiful angus with that jersey bull because basically i know her first time experiencing with being a mama I hopefully she's not gonna have to throw a big big cow her calf will be small because our bull is small and ultimately again it makes sense because whatever she throws off will most likely be uh, a freezer calf for us so it's not really for selling it's to train her to be a mama and to make sure that she can handle the calf and not cause any problems because she's not the biggest cow in the world anyway so so that's what makes sense for us so that's why we have these here now because we're doing an intense rotational grazing plan these three cows still can eat a lot of food don't don't kid yourself they're they're little but they can eat a lot but if if i didn't have an intense rotational grazing plan i would either have to cut all those trees back there or i would be buying a lot more feed well both of those options are not really sustainable and it's definitely if you're buying a lot of feed then that's really not sustainable so that doesn't make sense for us so ultimately like i said before have a plan for your homestead and if it's sustainability you got to have a bull or you got to have goats this this got to have a you know a goat that's going to breed them uh ai is not a bad thing and and when you start off hey ai because last thing you need to do is spend money on a bull that it's taking a chance on however that made sense for us as i said before i don't like goats i really don't when i see a goat i don't even like hearing them i just don't like them uh no offense to all you goat people um, but if that makes sense for you, this cow may not make sense for you. That's what the beauty of homesteading is. There's not a right and wrong plan. Um, it's what fits you. Um, that's what makes homesteading special versus farming, conventional farming, is what fits the Max Happy Homestead, what fits XYZ Homestead. Um, then you need to have a plan on that and make sure you're, you're making that work for you. Um, if we see, for instance, if we see some of this is not working. Say my bull just decides he's not going to breed these cows. That bull will not stay at the Max Happy Homestead. It will be for sale like tomorrow because he ultimately has one purpose, baby making. If he's not doing that, I don't need him on the homestead. However, his goal is to be fed and breed these cows. So our goal is that he's already done that hopefully with our two jerseys and hopefully we'll do it with our little Angus right there. So uh, she's starting to come in heat basically if she if she gets bred now she will be a little over two years old when she has her first calf which would be perfect and then again our goal is to breed all these sell off or keep for freezer calves so just a little video on i uh, really just walking the fence but ultimately on these cows here and why we have them sometimes my calf plan or my cow plan or my rotational plan may not be what fits yours but your goat plan may not fit me um, your sheep plan may fit that person but not fit the person that has these kind of chickens or these kind of goats or these kind of sheep so the reason i'm making this video is to understand that everybody does it different but long as you have a plan a one two three step whatever it may be then it will work for you so i hope this video helped again uh, if we can help you or you have questions about this miniature bull or, or um, our heifers or either even the anguses let us let us know comment uh, thank you for following our channel. I, I don't say that enough, but for all the subscriptions out there and all the people that watch and comment, it means a lot to us. That's why we love doing what we do. And ultimately, we hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you, and uh, happy homesteading, y'all.